So, uh, this morning we have a playlist. There's a playlist on Spotify, and it's called uh, Purusha and Prakriti. And um, that's phonetically spelled, so I know they're kind of wild words to have to search for on the playlist, but they're pretty phonetic. And um, there's plenty of time though, so um, you can set yourselves up. And when you're ready, we're going to begin this morning in a child's pose posture. So um, if child pose posture isn't comfortable for you um, on your knees or anything, then you could just lie on your back um, instead. But there's other, there are ways to make child pose more comfortable if you like to roll a blanket and sort of have that in the knee crease or if you have a cushion, you might even uh, put that in front of you. So, I mean, we're not going to be there for like a restorative amount of time, but uh, yeah, you just want to always feel that your body's feeling happy in the pose, especially in the morning when our bodies sometimes feel a little different than they do say around five o'clock when we've been moving around during the day. So you can put your music on and you can settle in to your child's pose. And sometimes too, maybe the head being forward doesn't feel great, especially when if there's a, like a lot of low pressure in the environment. So you could even stack one fist on top of the other and put your um, forehead there so that your head is a little higher and just in line with your heart to start the day with. So we're continuing to explore the goal of yoga, which is to have a little more control over the fluctuations of the mind and in essence to be free always. And the path to freedom is presented to us in the Yoga Sutras of Panjali and we are bringing our awareness to focus on verse 3 within chapter 1, which translates as, then the seer abides in its own nature. So you are the seer, the self, the soul, and this is referred to as Purusha. And what Patanjali explains in this verse is that you are not the body or the mind, but instead a witness to it all. The matter outside of this, which is constantly evolving, unfolding, changing, now that is referred to as Prakriti. It's Prakriti which we can become entangled in that could be a barrier to experiencing our true nature. But we can learn in practice being the witness or the seer by trying to still the waves of consciousness. Here you can access more Purusha, the true expression of your soul. And it is here you are free and at peace. <clears throat> so even now, just being able to just be for a few moments and focusing on your breath, that is really great practice to being the witness. And I like to visualize this um, Purusha the self as a little light inside of you and the brightness of that light dynamic and often this depends on the heaviness or burden of external factors or prakriti but every time you come to practice yoga that light is being fueled it's helping to shine the light a little brighter so let that be your focus this morning just to abide in your own nature and shine your light So from child pose, let's just lift up onto all fours. So here we can bring the shoulders over the wrists, knees under the hips, and just going to do a cow and a cat. So we can start to pull the heart through towards the front of the mat, reach the tummy to the mat, hips to the ceiling, heart to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, just start to lengthen the tail. We sort of tuck it and pull the belly to the spine, let the head come down. So we're looking towards the tummy. And then just gonna bring yourself into that neutral spine where you started. And stretch your right leg away and pull back through the right heel. And let your weight pull back from the hands even and just stretch through the back of that leg. 
and then come back to where you started with the shoulders over the wrist and try to bring that right knee into the nose. So we're curling around the leg and just gonna pause here. And just, if you can, cross your right leg in front of your left leg. If that doesn't happen easily, then just don't worry about it. And we're gonna sit back to child pose again. So if the legs crossing isn't working, just sit back to normal child pose. And then bring yourself back up to all four. We bring the knee back into the nose, curl around that leg and set it back next to the left knee. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up. Come into a down dog, probably quite short distance between hands and feet, but we're just gonna have one breath here. And then next exhale, float your knees to the mat, but lift yourself up so you come to a high kneel. Interlace your fingers behind your head, and we're gonna take a little side bend to the right, and then circle around the center, tiny circle, so almost sort of feeling like around your rib cage. For women, you might just imagine you're circling around where your bra strap sits. Come back to center. Other side, to the left. Little circle round. And then back up to center. Now we're gonna open the arms wide like a cactus. Squeeze the shoulders together, lengthen the tail, just lift the heart like you're doing that cow pose again. And then we're gonna cross the right arm under the left arm. Come to eagle arms. If it's possible to find palm on palm, if not, just hug your shoulders. And then just curl forward like you're doing cat again. And then you're gonna restack your spine and open up the arms and come back onto your hands and knees. So we're gonna do that all again. So coming into cow pose, that little back bend, a little extension of the spine. Next breath, curl yourself into cat. Then we come back to neutral spine, stretch your left leg out straight, pull back through the heel, stretch away from the hands, just to really let that back leg have a good stretch. And then we come forward again with the chest slightly, knee into the nose. So curl around the leg, use your abdominals. If you can, cross your left leg in front of your right leg, sit back to the heels. And then next breath, back onto your hands and knees, uncross, tuck the toes, lift up and back into down dog. One cycle of breath here. And then as your exhale comes, float the knees, lift off out the hands to come to that high kneel, bring your arms, excuse me, your hands, interlace your fingers behind your head. So when we're kneeling here, think about really trying to use your glutes, like you could wrap your outer hips around, lengthen your tailbone so your belly's on too. And we're gonna go to the left and circle round, tiny little circle, ending up on the right, back up to center. So one more time to the right, circle round. We end up on the left, come back to center. Open your arms into that cactus shape. Draw the shoulders together, lift the heart. This time we're gonna cross left over right. Eagle arms, curl yourself into that little cat pose. And then restack your spine on your next breath. Untangle your arms. Come back to all four. Let's do that one more time on each side. Now you know what's coming. You can really focus on your breathing a little more. Let it be a moving meditation here. So cow pose is the first, the belly reaches to the mat, the heart and the hips reach up. When you exhale, pull everything in and curl yourself looking to the tummy. Next breath, neutral spine. Straighten out that right leg, pull back through the heel, stretch away from the hands. And then shoulders over wrists, knee to the nose, curl around that right leg. See if you could just scoop it in front of your left leg and sit back to the heels. One breath here. And then back to all fours, untangle the legs, knee to the nose. And then the knees meet, tuck the toes, lift up and press back into your down dog. Have a cycle of breath here. And then we're gonna float the knees. 
Come off the hands, come up into that high kneel where we interlace the fingers. We're going to the right first. So side bend to the right, little circle through the center, side bend to the left, back up. Now to the left, circling down and around, coming back up the other side, opening out to your pitchfork arms, opening the front of the body like you're doing that cow pose, right under left for your eagle arms, and we just take that gentle curl forward, breathing into the back, restacking, unwinding the arms, Back to all four one more time. So starting with that little back bend and then curling into your cat pose. Back to neutral, left leg straightens out. Pull back through the heel, really stretch the leg. And then we're gonna bring the knee to the nose, pull the belly back, cross that left leg over right if it's possible sit back to the heels. And then we come back to all four, uncross the leg, pause with your knee to nose, one breath, and then down dog is coming up. So the hips lift up and back, have a cycle of breath in your down dog, and then lower the knees as you exhale, use your inhale, to come up, interlace the fingers behind the head. We go to the left this time. So side bend to the left, circle round the center to the right, back up. Now to the right, take it over, around the center, up on the left side. When you come to center, cactus arms, draw the shoulders together, and then left over right for our eagle arms. And we can just gently curl, have a breath into the back of the body, and then bring yourself back up. Untangle your arms, hands to the mat, sit back to your heels, take your knees extra wide, and just stretch out into child pose. Make it a little more active, your child pose. So maybe your head doesn't touch the floor, your elbows are lifted. We can really feel the shoulder blades draw down towards the ribs. So there's engagement in the arms, but we can just let the breath slow back down again. Just in case you forgot to breathe through all that, which can happen. And when you're ready, you're gonna keep this engagement in the arms into down dog. So we can lift onto the knees, Tuck the toes, lift the hips, press back. So even though your arms are working here, try and hold the weight into the legs. And hopefully the legs a little more warmed up now. You might just step the hands or feet a little further distance if that feels better for your down dog. So finding your down dog, which that is different for everyone, the distance between your hands and feet. With your next exhale, let's come forward to the front of your mat and let yourself just drink down to your legs. And when you inhale, we're gonna push the ground away. We're gonna rise up to stand. Let the palms find each other. Exhale, come back to the heart. From here, Let's just take a giant step back with your right foot. Coming into a standing lunge, we're gonna reach the arms up to the ceiling. So pull through that right heel, just like you did on your hands and knees, but anchor through that left heel now. And then with your exhale, let's bring the palms together and just slowly send them to the center. And then on your exhale, just gonna start to reach the heart towards that left thigh. And imagine someone sort of pulling from the crown of your head to shift the weight forward and lift up off your back foot in warrior three. Try and keep your hips nice and even here. And then stepping back from warrior three, we can straighten the front leg and just fold down to that front leg. Have a couple breaths here. 
If the front leg doesn't easily straighten, don't worry about it. It can be a little soft knee this morning. And then we can add a little twist. So right hand's gonna stay down and we're just gonna open up that left arm. So it's like a, a revolved triangle, but the heel can lift if it needs to. And then we're gonna release that and bring ourselves back up to our standing lunge. And we're gonna add our eagle arms. So we're gonna take the arms wide and then bring your right arm under your left arm. Come back to what we were just doing on the knees. And then we're gonna step into eagle pose from the back leg. So take your back leg and bring the knee to the chest, start. Bend your left leg and cross thigh over thigh. So similar to what we did when we were on our hands and knees in cat cow. And we could even cross that right foot behind the left leg. Having a breath here. And then we're gonna untangle the arms as you bring that knee back to your chest, step back to your lunge. And then the hands can come down, stepping into plank. From plank, we're gonna lower down onto the tummy, take a back bend, and then pressing back, downward facing dog. So now coming forward to the front of your mat, lengthen the spine, and then fold to the legs. When you inhale, we're gonna rise all the way up to stand, palms come together, exhale, back to the heart. So exact same sequence, other side. So giant step back with your left foot, coming into your lunge. We're gonna have a breath here. And then the palms meet. We're gonna send them down to the heart center. Warrior three is next. So we're just gonna reach the heart towards the thigh. Imagine you're being pulled to the front of your mat so you can lift up off that left leg. And then you can step it back to your lunge, but bring the hands to the mat and see about straightening that front leg. And now we can add the twist. Left fingertips stay to the floor, reaching right up to the ceiling with the right arm, having a breath there. And then I'm gonna release down, bend that front knee, push the ground away to come up to your lunge again. And then take the arms wide. This time we're gonna take left over right. Hope that's right. And we're in eagle arms. So back leg is gonna step over front leg. So we can bring the left knee to the chest first, bend that right knee, thigh over thigh, let yourself sink back down into Eagle Pose. Having a breath here. And then standing up, untangle the arms, knee to chest, step back. Standing lunge again. And then the hands can come down, stepping back to plank. Lowering down from plank. Breathing in to your back bend, breathing out into down dog. From downward facing dog, let's bring the right knee to your right wrist on the mat into pigeon. So the lower leg is going to go diagonal on the mat. We're going to send that left leg out and just sink down onto your forearms. If you find this is painful for your knee or your hip, you could do this on your back. So you can lie on your back and bring your right ankle to your left thigh and hold the left thigh. And then we can press the palms into the mat, lift the chest, 
tuck the back toes, step back to downward facing dog. Couple breaths here before we do the left side. And then when you're ready, send that left knee to your left wrist. The lower leg goes diagonal. We slide the right leg away. Try and keep the pelvis nice and even here as you settle in onto your forearms. And just letting yourself soften a little bit. And just being the witness to the breath. And then we can press the hands into the mat, lift the chest up, tuck the back toes, step back into downward facing dog. Having a breath or two here. And then when you're ready, floating your knees to the mat, sitting back to the heels into child pose. From child pose, slowly just start to walk yourself up to sit. You can cross your ankles and then bring yourself to your sit bones and stretch your legs in front. If that doesn't work for you, just find your own way to sitting with your legs out in front. And then just a little softness in the knees. We're going to lengthen the spine out to the legs. Keep the legs engaged and just having a few breaths here. And then slowly going to come up and just cross the legs and find, well, actually you don't have to cross your legs, but just find a comfortable seat that might be with your legs crossed. It might be with your legs out in front of you. And we're just going to have a very short seated meditation before we lie down for Shavasana. But I hope that won't be talking to no one because I can't see your squares anymore. Um, so, so yeah, and if, if you feel like you need to lie down now instead of sitting for a minute or two, then please do, of course. But whatever seat you're taking, just bringing your awareness back to your breath, closing your eyes and just focusing on your breathing, just being the seer of the breath, a witness. With each inhale and exhale, just bring yourself into harmony just by focusing on your internal rhythm. And imagine now a small spark somewhere deep inside of your heart. And just see what color that is for you and how bright that spark might be. Maybe it's just a dim glow. Maybe it's a very bright, almost fire inside you. And with each breath, just imagine that spark growing brighter, getting stronger, becoming a light which fills up your chest and belly like a blazing fire inside of you. Just taking a moment to focus on your color light dancing inside of you on your breath. And now imagine that as you inhale, that light could travel up, out through the crown of the head and shining out into the universe. And as you exhale, you could send that light down to root you to the earth. So as you inhale, let that light shine out into the universe, connecting you to the divine. And as you exhale, send it down, rooting you to the earth for support. 
your light is your connection to everything. At times it might be small, other times it might be bright, but it's always there, ready for you to tap into whenever you want. So you can stay seated and just breathing the light out into the universe on the inhale and breathing it down into the earth on the exhale. Or you can lower the body to the mat. Keep this awareness. Don't lose that connection to your light, but just allowing the body to have a more restful position. Inhaling, letting the light shine out through the crown of the head and exhaling, allowing the light to shine down into your roots to the earth. Let yourself now just soak in your light. Yoga is a light which, once lit, will never dim. Yoga is a light which, once lit, will never dim. slowly slowly coming back deeper breaths gentle movements in time if you're on the back you could roll to lie on the right side and then when you're ready coming up to sit so i thank you for your patience with our technology this morning namaste